Hey Psych2Goers, welcome back to another video. We wanted to say a quick but huge thank you for all the support you've given us. Here at Psych2Go, we strive to make psychology and mental health more accessible to everyone, and you help us do that. Now, let's begin. Everyone has things that make them happy. Perhaps you like to hang out with your friends or sit down with your family and enjoy a delicious meal, or you have a special hobby. You do these things because you receive feelings of pleasure and contentedness when you participate in these activities. But what if you stopped feeling enjoyment out of your favorite things? This is what's known as anhedonia, otherwise recognized as emotional flatlining. And it's when you have a reduced ability to experience pleasure. As a quick disclaimer, we wanted to make it clear that this video is for informative purposes only. It's important to see a doctor or other mental health professional if you feel that you're struggling with something like this. There are two types of anhedonia. The first type of anhedonia is social, and it involves withdrawing from others because you lose any interest in being with other people. The second type of anhedonia is physical, and this happens when you lack a sense of pleasure from physical items and or sensations. For example, eating your favorite food no longer gives you enjoyment, or your favorite song means nothing to you at all anymore. With anhedonia, nothing seems to matter anymore, and it can make you feel isolated. Your relationships start to deteriorate. You miss out on events and gatherings, and everything you do feels very mundane. So what causes anhedonia? Emotional flatlining can arise in a multitude of ways. Most commonly, it's a core symptom of depression. Sometimes it's a result of dealing with a life-changing illness. Other times, prescription medication can bring out anhedonia like from antidepressants or even antibiotics. Anhedonia is much more than simply feeling numb. Occasionally, and especially when you have depression, emotional numbness does occur from time to time, but anhedonia is much more chronic and often requires direct treatment. How is anhedonia diagnosed? Someone experiencing anhedonia may have any of these following symptoms, withdrawal from social situations and relationships, faking emotions, depressed mood, lack of interest in intimacy, negative feelings, and a flat effect. To get diagnosed, you have to go to your doctor and keep track of your symptoms. Your doctor will try to rule out other possibilities such as physical ailments like thyroid issues or malnutrition. Otherwise, they will take a look at your moods and personal experiences. From there, they move into treatment options, which can be tricky. How is anhedonia treated? Unfortunately, anhedonia is challenging to treat as there are many variables to consider. However, it is still possible to treat, but often requires some fine tuning to find the best course of action that will work for you. When you see your doctor, they'll eliminate any possible underlying causes first. As it's commonly associated with depression, they may prescribe you antidepressants, or if anhedonia is a result of the medicine itself, your doctor might have you change medications. Other than that, Anhedonia is less commonly treated with electroconvulsive therapy and similar physical therapeutic processes. Losing the ability to feel can be horrifying and confusing. However, there are always people and treatments out there to help you. The most important takeaway is that it is possible to feel again. What are your thoughts on anhedonia? And what topic would you like us to cover next? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video, give us a thumbs up and share it with someone who might find it helpful too. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more Psych2Go content. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.